so good to be here today. Isn't it exciting? This is such an exciting day. I was called about a week ago, said, and uh, Robert said, Mindy, can you come out on Sunday? He said, our new minister is going to be here. He's, um, he's actually, I don't know if he's in the room now, he's, he was going to hang out with the kids today, because it's not often that as a minister you get to know what's happening with the kids. So what a great opportunity. Uh, but I was really honored to be invited, because I feel like this is one of those moments like, this is one of those historic moments that it's like, wow, I get to be there on that first day. Isn't that cool? You know, like, I've, I'm picturing myself someday, like, down the road where I got my, my great-grandkids on my knee, and I can say, I was there that day at Unity in Dallas. When James Buchanan was there for the first day, I was there for that. So I feel like it's one of those days. Do you feel that? Yes. feels like a turning point, and it's exciting to be a part of something like that. So I want to begin with an opportunity to, um, to share a blessing for, for James and this new beginning for all of us. So let's just take a moment to go within. And we give thanks, loving God, for James Buchanan, for a new leader, for a new captain of our ship. And we are grateful for the calling that has brought him here to Unity of Dallas. We are grateful for the clarity of the vision that has attracted him to this community, and we send him love and blessings, knowing that the ideas and the inspiration and the energy that he has is here to align with the energy and the vision and the blessings that are in this community, and together, amazing things, amazing things will unfold. And so it is. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Ooh, that's exciting, isn't it? Can't wait to see. So I started thinking, okay, this is sort of a pivot point, you know, a big day, transitional day. You're moving into a transition. It's kind of exciting when it's beginning because it's like, oh, how many of you have been working really, really hard during the transition? How many of you are like, oh, good, James is here. I can relax. <laughs> He's hoping you're not thinking that, but I know you're thinking that. I know you're thinking that. So I started thinking, you know, what is the message? What is the message for today? How can I be of most service for you at this new beginning? And what came to me is a story this is from a book by a man named Roy Williams. He's a business expert out of Austin that I started following when I was down in Wimberley, and he has incredible wisdom. This is from one of his books, and the story goes like this. It's set in 1492. There's a nine-year-old boy. His name is Tomas Montaleno, and he stowed away on the Santa Maria. So here's how Roy Williams describes that moment in time. There is no sky so big as the one that covers the ocean. For 12 days, there has been nothing to see. I wait patiently until the day's end to ask my question because I know the captain is a busy man. Now, staring at his silhouette against the star-studded skies of midnight, I anxiously await his answer. Framed in darkness, the shadowy captain points an inky finger upward and starboard and says to me, Polaris does not move. But Captain Columbus, I respond quickly, I don't understand. Never lowering his finger, the captain continues, Fools watch the waves and make decisions according to ever-changing circumstances. But a wise captain charts his course by a star which does not move. When your journey is long and when the way before you is rough, never take your eyes off the North Star. Focus your vision on beautiful, unwavering, constant Polaris. That was his advice. And it came to me today because to me, that North Star is your mission. It's a divinely guided mission. What are you here to do? What is the thing that you're here to do that does not change? Because what happens for us personally, if we don't have a mission statement in our life, is we tend to look around 
to decide what's ours to do. What are our friends doing? What do my parents want me to do? What do the kids think I should do? What does the guru here up on the stage say I should do? You know, we look around. What does the government say I should do? Uh, what, is the, what is society telling me I should do? What is the economy telling me I should do? And we look out here to help, you know, make decisions when really there's one place to look. And that is your North Star. That is your purpose. What have you been put on this earth to do? And if we can take the time to identify that, it guides us through everything that we do. The same is true, what is true for the individual is true for the organization. So when an organization like a spiritual community does not have a solid mission, what you end up doing is looking to the minister for all the answers, or looking to the board for all the answers, or maybe back and forth. Then ah, you get a little seasick because you're going back and forth. But if you have a strong mission, then it's not like, oh great, James is here, we can all take off because he's got the realm. Now it's okay, we got the captain, we got the crew, we're all rowing, we all have that North Star, we can all go there together. And there's no limit to what you can do when you keep your focus on beautiful, unwavering, constant Polaris. So my intention today is three things. One, to help you have a greater sense of what that North Star is for you, your own personal mission. Two, to help you connect with the mission of this organization, and maybe with a new captain, maybe that's um, gonna be looked at again, but just to sort of reconnect with that. And three, to see how that mission that is yours connects with the mission that is this organization. Because even though they're different, they're connected. Does that make sense? Does that sound super exciting? Yes. Does it? Yes. Okay, good, okay, good. Because that's what we're doing. <laughs> All right. So, where do we start? How many of you already have a vision statement, have a personal mission statement? How many of you know it so well you could recite it by heart if I passed you a microphone? Hey, a few of you do. Anybody want to? <laughs> I know, that's like, do you want to, Candace? Come on, girl, give her a round of applause. You're my rock star. My personal mission is to encourage and inspire others. Nice. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. Can you see how you start every day with that? And it brings focus to everything. If you know what you're here to do, if you know, you know we were talking, she, you meditate on that, right? That's how you wake up, is focused on that mission. Now, how many of you are aware that this ministry has a mission statement? How many of you, if I gave you the microphone, could recite it by heart? A couple of you can. Jim, would you? Could you? I'm going to totally put you on the spot. He doesn't know I'm doing this, so I'm totally putting you on the spot. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Jim, yeah. <laughs> go, Jim, go, Jim. Panic. Um, <clears throat> we pray, meditate, educate, serve, and celebrate as we awaken to... Spirits, empowering. empowering presence in our lives, our community, and our world. Yes! <laughs> well done. You are a rock star, because I totally, he did not know that was coming, so. Well done. So your, your mission statement is a, is a, that's your North Star, that's what you anchor onto. So to show you how powerful a mission is, this is a game called Name That Missionary. A missionary is someone who gives their life to their mission. See if you can tell who these people are based on their mission. So this person's mission is to end apartheid. Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela. Going back in history, this person's mission was to preserve the union. Abraham, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. This person's mission was to show mercy and compassion to the dying. <laughs> Mother Teresa, isn't this interesting? Go way back, this person's, her mission statement was to free France. <laughs> Joan of Arc, isn't it phenomenal? These people who changed the course of history, it's because they gave their life to their mission. They guided their ship by that North Star and we know who they are because of their mission. You don't even need their name. You know who they are because of their mission. So um, you know, there's a, a book by Lori Beth Jones. It's called The Path, and it's a fabulous book. It's the best book I know in terms of writing a mission statement. So if you really want to go deeper, I, that's a really good book. 
Uh, she says, the greater the mission, the more clearly it can be stated. The greater the mission, the more clearly it can be stated. So here are some spiritual teachers. See if you can guess which spiritual teacher this is based on their, um, their teachings, their mission. One thing I teach, suffering and the end of suffering. Buddha. I came to seek out and save the lost. Jesus. <laughs> like, Jesus? Yeah, Jesus said that. <laughs> I came to lead my people to the promised land. Moses. We know them because they gave their life to their mission. It's clear. It's easy. It's memorable. So we, you know, we know these people. One of my great um, idols, I don't know, gurus, I love Buckminster Fuller. I love the teachings. I love his writing. I love his mind. And one of the things I love about him, he says that to him, he doesn't see God as a noun, proper or improper. To him, God is a verb. That God is movement. God is expression. God is not love the noun. God is love the verb. We're here to love. And so when asked about his life, this is a quote from Buckminster Fuller, like, what are you here to do? What's your identity about? Buckminster Fuller said, I live on earth at present, and I don't know what I am. I know I'm not a category. I'm not a thing. I'm not a noun. I seem to be a verb, an evolutionary process, an integral function of the universe. There is something I do that is integral to the universe. I'm a verb. So if you think of your mission statement, we're not going to go into like writing an entire mission statement in a 20-minute talk. Woo, that'd be way too much. Um, I'm doing a 21-day spiritual challenge. I have a free email list if you want to go deeper. You know, that's available out there. What I want to get you today is just to um, the seed. What is the kernel at the core of your mission statement? Because once you identify the seed, it can grow and blossom. Lori Beth Jones says a, a mission statement usually doesn't come to you in a bang, it comes to you in a blossom. It kind of unfolds and expands. So let's take a look at some of our uh, great spiritual teachers and find their verbs. If you were to take what they said and just pull out the verb, Buddha teaches. Moses leads. Jesus saves. Do you see how each leader is different and because of those differences, their followings are different. There's a different purpose, there's a different energy. When you know what your verb is, that verb guides you in how you create the infrastructure to fulfill the mission. Does that make sense? That's why the mission is so incredibly powerful. So today is about figuring out what's your verb. You may not get the whole mission statement, maybe it'll blossom in front of you easily. Uh, but if you can just start with the verb, Think of the sentence, I am here to blank. And there's a verb that goes there. And it's your verb. I am here to heal. I am here to teach. I am here to uplift. I am here to nurture. I am here to nourish. I am here to sustain. Whatever it is. Think about it for a moment. Go within. I am here to what? What would your verb be? If you think you know yours, nod your head a little bit. If there's a word coming to you. And if it's not, it's a good thing to meditate on. But this is the seed. And from this, you may find that your mission statement just naturally flows. You know, that you may have, it's like, okay, who am I here to lead? I'm here to lead my people. Where am I here to lead them to? To the promised land. And boom, there's a mission statement, just like that. So you may find that it's that easy for you, but if you just start with the verb and let that guide you in all that you do, it's incredibly powerful. If you look to this community, and I know the mission statement's kind of long, Jim, well done. You got lots of verbs in there. There's actually sort of a constellation of <laughs> verbs <laughs> in your mission statement, and you want to find the one that's the North Star. You've got this constellation of pray, educate, serve, you facilitate, meditate, you've got a lot of verbs in there. A lot of those verbs are the actual programs that help you fulfill the mission, right? So your mission statement actually starts out with, these are the things we're going to do in order to fulfill this purpose. If you look to the second half of your mission statement, there's actually two really powerful verbs in there. 
empower, and awaken. And when you look at the first part with the pray, meditate, and all those things, all of those things are designed to help empower people to awaken. Make sense? So somewhere in there, that's the North Star. And if you can filter everything you do, you, know, you have a new minister, how can we empower him to begin? How can we empower a new person to get involved? You know, someone came to me and said, well, I'm a, on the volunteer team. How does this tie in to me um, trimming the bushes? I'm like, well, what if you empowered your volunteers to have service be part of their spiritual development? What if you empowered them and said, make it beautiful? Bring your gifts to this. And can you see how your personal mission statement, how beautiful it is that it's different than the next person? Because if each of you brings your mission, your verb, to this verb of empowering... An awakening, can you see how they fit together? And it allows, that's what creates the packed house. You don't pack the house just because it's great to have people in seats. That's not inspiring. You pack the house because you find people that are aligned with that intention of empowering a global awakening. Do you feel some juice behind that? Do you feel how cool it would be to bring your gift to this mission of creating and empowering an awakening in the world and in your communities and in your lives. That's what fills a church. And you've got that. You've got all the pieces. It's just getting everybody to bring their gifts to that, uh, to that vision. The word mission actually comes from the word, it's a Latin word, missio, which means to send. You have been sent for a purpose. Jesus says to his, follow to his followers, as the Father has sent me, I send you. The Father sent me for a purpose, I'm sending you out for a purpose. You've got something to do. We have a world that needs a wake-up call. And so we get to wake up ourselves and pass it on <laughs> and empower each other to do that. So a good mission statement is, is brief, it's one sentence, action-oriented, there's your verb and it's memorable so that you can tap into it really easy. You can communicate it very, very easily. So um, let's see, my mission statement is to inspire infinite connections. And I actually came up with that mission statement several years ago in some of the work that I've done with this community. So it's really fun to share that with you today, to inspire infinite connection. And once you have your statement and you let it lead you, you let it guide you, what happens is whenever you have a decision to make, whenever something's challenging, whenever you feel stuck, the answer is in that mission statement. It's always there. Like, what do I do now, God? Look to your North Star. It's, the answer's there. My daughter is nine years old. She just turned nine in March. And whenever she gets a year older, we always give her a new responsibility so that she can sort of grow and have more chores and things like that. So turning nine, we decided that her new responsibility was going to be folding the laundry. So she's gotten very good at it. She's very proud of herself. She enjoys folding the laundry. But last week, I came home, and it was after school. We had a load of laundry in the dryer. I said, hey, Jenna, um, we got some laundry to do. Um, can you go fold the laundry for me? And she was like, oh, yeah, Mom, I'll do it in just a minute. After dinner, <laughs> with all the clothes still in the dryer, I said, hey, Jenna. And she was playing. I'm like, hey, Jenna. I just wanted to remind you that there are clothes in the dryer. Would you please you know, fold the clothes? And she said, oh, absolutely, Mom, in a minute. <laughs> She's playing Legos, that puzzle's going, whatever it was. I'm like, okay, that's cool, that's cool. The next morning, <laughs> I go downstairs. There's the washer, still full of clothes, and I think, what do I do here? My mission is to inspire infinite connection. So what I did was, she's upstairs playing Legos, she's playing, I folded the laundry. I folded the laundry and when I had her little stack of clothes, I took it up to her room and I said, hey Jenna, I got a surprise for you. I did the laundry for you. I folded the laundry, she's like, mom, I was gonna do that. And I said, I know you were and I know you've been so good and I've, it's been so helpful and I'm so grateful. And I know you were playing and having fun, and I just thought it would be fun to surprise you and do it for you today. Because you've been doing such a great job, and it's helped me so much. So don't worry about it. You're doing a great job, but, but I wanted to give this gift to you. 
because I wanted you to have more time to play. And I appreciate all that you've done for me. Here's your laundry. But mom, I wanted to do the laundry. <laughs> so tell you what, I'll do another load today. <laughs> and you can do it this afternoon. She's like, okay, okay. The next morning, she wakes up at six in the morning. By the time I'm out of bed, she has folded the laundry, she has unloaded the dishwasher, she has set the table for breakfast, and she has tidied the living room because she's got to outdo her mom, right? <laughs> And I thought, wow, that was so cool because it was a gift to her. And then she saw that and was inspired by that to give that gift back to me. It's like, wow, how cool. Because my mission is not to punish people into submission, right? <laughs> that wouldn't be very inspiring. <laughs> my mission, honey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks, Mom. <laughs> my mission is to punish you into submission. No, my mission is to inspire you. To inspire you with my, by being a role model. To inspire you in a way that creates deeper connection. And when you have that North Star, it helps give you ideas for how to navigate things that are challenging. So that's the power of a, um, of a mission statement that really you can connect with and, and let it guide you. There's a parable in the book of Matthew that I think ties into this really well. It's about, um, you know, the king. You know, whenever we see the king in the parable, we know we're talking about a divine presence. So the king decides to throw a banquet, a wedding banquet, for his son. I'm sure you've probably heard this one before. Think of it in terms of, of a mission. So the way the parable goes, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. So we're thinking of our king as our divine presence, creating this banquet of abundance and fulfillment, like our spiritual potential. There is this banquet that's being thrown in honor of his son in honor of our Christ presence. There's this banquet going on. He sent his slaves out to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they wouldn't come. Huh, that's weird. <laughs> now in these days, this, this parable was given to the scribes and the Pharisees, who in those days would have been the ones that would have been invited to a wedding banquet. You invite the upper crust, right? So says so the slaves went out, invited everybody, and nobody came. So again, the king sent other slaves saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I've, I have dinner, I've prepared dinner, I have my oxen, my fat calves, they've been slaughtered, everything is ready, come to the wedding banquet. This is going to be so good. They must not know how good this is going to be or they would come. Go out and tell them how good this party is going to be. And so the slaves go off again to the scribes and the Pharisees, the upper crust, and they made light of it. And they went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. <sighs> Not cool, right? Not a happy king. So he goes out, and I think, I think when I think of this part of the parable, think of all the reasons why people don't take the time to figure out what their North Star is. I'm busy. I got my job. I got my farm. I got my business. I got things to do. Is it that big of a deal? How important really is this? How important is it to be part of a spiritual community? How important is my prayer, my meditation practice? Is it really that big of a deal? I've got other things to do. And they made light of it. And they didn't get it. And the king was enraged. So he sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, burned their cities, and said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those who are invited are not worthy. If we are apathetic about our spiritual life, we are not worthy of receiving the benefits of our practice, our spiritual practice. Because those people aren't worthy, so they go therefore into the main streets. Invite everyone. Everyone is invited to this banquet. It is available to us all. No matter what your faith, no matter where you live, no matter what your past is, this invitation is open to us all. And so they went out into the streets, they gathered all they found, both good and bad, both good and bad. So people who have like shady past, they got a purpose. They got a reason to be at this party. Good and bad. They went out and invited them. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. And when the king came in, now this is kind of a twist that seems a little weird, but I like it in terms of mission statements. It says the king came in to see the guests, and he noticed that there was a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. So in those days, when you came to the wedding feast, you were given a robe at the door, 
and you were expected to wear that robe for the wedding party, for the banquet. So he comes in, the king sees this guy, you're not wearing your robe. What's that about? I've given you a gift, and you're not using it. What's that about? I've given you a gift, and you're not using it. What's that about? And the man was speechless. I asked you to do one thing, and you're not doing it. And so the king says to his attendants, bind him hand and foot, throw him into the darkness. Throw him into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, which was the worst thing ever, is weeping and gnashing of teeth. You don't want the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Sends him into the outer darkness. And to me, I think of, you know, we're all here at this feast. This community is a feast. It's a spiritual feast. There is a bounty here. And James is adding to that. He's adding to what's already here. It's like a bigger feast. So we have this banquet happening, and we've all been given a gift at the door. When we walked into this world, we were all given a gift, and that is your verb, your reason for being here. How are you here to serve? And if you're going to come to the party, bring your gift. Do something with it. Whatever you were sent on this planet to do, when you come into this community, bring that gift to the mission of this community. Can you see how you get more out of the party that way? And can you imagine, just, just as you look around this room, what happens, not just in our individual lives, not just in this community, but what happens in the greater community when every single one of us brings our gifts to the party in service to this mission of empowering and awakening. Cool stuff, yes? Pretty exciting? Are you excited? Are you a little scared? <laughs> Mostly excited, good, okay. The Native Americans who met Christopher Columbus when he came across, uh, they called Polaris the star that does not move. That was their name for it. It's the star that does not wander. All the other stars wander around the sky, but there's one that does not wander. So what is that thing for you? I have a challenge for you. I don't know, I don't think James is here. I think he's still with the kids, is that correct? Because this could be a little surprise for him. Ha. <laughs> so my challenge for you today, in a moment the ushers are gonna bring by a name tag. You may already have one. They're going to bring by a name tag. My challenge for you today is to, on this name tag, write your name, of course, and underneath it write, I am here to, and put your verb. And it may not be the verb, like the forever verb. It may just be the seed of something that's still blossoming. But what is that verb that's coming to you right now? So I could say, you know, my name is Mindy. I am here to inspire I am here to connect, I am here to heal, I'm here to uplift, whatever it might be. And then as you move into your meeting after the service, or if you're just mingling, that you've got that name tag on so that when James meets you, he not only knows your name, he knows your calling. He knows your gift. He knows what it is that you bring to the party, right? And what a great way, it was so fun after the nine o'clock to see everybody and, and to read their name tags and say, oh yeah, I can see that in you, I can see that in you. Somebody had on their name tag, I'm, I'm here to deepen my spiritual practice. And I'm like, oh, you're, you're, she said, I know it's all about me. And I'm like, yeah, but your verb is about deepening. I'm like, can you imagine if that's your, your mission is to, to take what's happening here? You can only go so deep on Sunday morning. If you're one of those ones that helps people go deeper with it, how cool is that? What's your verb? So uh, we're going to pass out the name tags. As you get them, there's pencils in the back of your um, chairs. Or if you have a pen or, you know, you can share with your neighbors. I know, ladies, we got these big old purses. Surely there is a pen in there somewhere. <laughs> there might be like a whole set of markers you can pass out. I don't know. Take a moment and write down what it is for you. Put your name on it. I am here to. And write down whatever comes to you. We'll pass that out. And know that it may change. I had one guy come up to me, he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm here to help. He's like, help seemed kind of weak. I'm not real happy with help. But it's the word that best describes what I'm doing. I'm like, well, maybe it's just the perfect word. Maybe someone told you that's not the right word, and, and that is your word. Or maybe when you get to the rest of that statement, you'll find another way to say it that feels stronger to you. 
Start. The key is to start. Look to that sky. Which star do you think is your North Star? And write down that verb. All right. So let us affirm together. Repeat after me. I have come for a mighty purpose. I, have come for a mighty purpose. I, accept, my I accept my mission. And I will not stray from it. Thank you, living, loving God. Thank you, living, loving God. Amen. Amen. And so it is. Thank you all so much. God bless. Inspired. Heaven help you. Because <laughs> when I get inspired... All right, it is time for us to prepare our offertory blessing. As the ushers come forward, <clears throat> I ask that you share with me the offertory blessing. Divine love, as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother, God. And if you hold that in your thoughts, as you are preparing your offertory blessing. This is a new day. I can feel it. I know that you can feel it too. We are excited. We are blessed. We are willing to open our hearts to new beginnings and to, to share of our abundance. And so it is. Amen. Good morning. My name is Pamela Bailey, and I just want to say what a blessing it has been to be with you all today. Thank you so much. I want to say to Mindy, uh, I have my children with me today, my daughter Bryn, Elizabeth, and my son Brayden. And they, I'm sure they're saying, why didn't you hear this message about not being punitive and punishing like 10 years ago? <laughs> so I have learned something today, and I'm grateful for that. So I also have with me um, Alice White and Dee Dee Hicks. Um, and again, I'm very grateful to be here and to be able to share this song. Uh, I was invited by Regina Nippert, and I'm so grateful for your leadership for allowing me to come, and particularly to share this song. So I am a native of South Carolina. My family has been there uh, for generations and generations. We come through Charleston, South Carolina through slavery, and we uh, ended in the PD area of South Carolina. And so I was working on an academic project on last year. I was teaching um, at a university here uh, in Texas as an adjunct professor. And it was during a very tumultuous summer for South Carolina. I'm sure that many of you all were, are aware that there was a massacre of nine beautiful souls at Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. So as I was processing that through a lot of tears and a lot of praying, God gave me this song and so I have put together a project. I'm following my mission to, to be a teacher and to build bridges. And so we're going to be starting a project on tomorrow. It's called acrossthebridgesong.com. And we're inviting all of you and people around the world to go to that site. You can download the song that we'll be singing today at no charge. We're asking that you do your version of the song, upload it on the site, so in the month of June, we can send Charleston a love letter to let them know that we still stand with them, that we are praying for them and believing for healness and hope. Amen. Since they jumped the broom on the banks of the great PD, she wore a carved out baboon on her hat as a sign of her fidelity. 
He said he'd hold her in his arms again Well, they sold him way off far And when the war was finally over There came a knocking on her door And he said, come, go with me Across the bridge Daddy wears his old blue suit, ties yellow ribbons in her hair. For her and four little girls in Birmingham, he must take a stand. And so on a bloody Sunday, he took his daughter by the hand, and he said, come go. Late one evening in the month of June, the saints kneel down to pray. They thank the Lord for helping them and for showing them the way. Moms and dads and a recent grad look down from a Charleston bridge. It was filled with peace and love that day. That's when they heard the angel say, and he said, Come, go with me across the bridge. Go hand in hand to freedom land.
So thank you, Pamela, and your beautiful group, and your very talented son. Bob, you got a, got somebody in the run in there. So, oh, you got you. Okay. <clears throat> and so the chaplains are available for prayer, as always, on, on Sunday mornings. And they will be scattered. They, you'll recognize them from the shawls like that that you had on, if you'll stand and let everybody see. So if you seek prayer privately, uh, just approach one of them. And we are excited beyond belief. Run up here, James. Run up here. <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of running. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And before you sit down, these are for you. We did this in children. Well, we didn't really do it, but in children's church. Uh, yeah, that's a May basket. So thank you. Please have a seat. Uh, I actually don't, wasn't really told I was going to say anything, but now that you've given me the mic, <laughs> really, I just want to say all is well. And I want to say, I am here to serve. <laughs> yeah. That is my verb. And even more than that, even more than that possibly is, I am here that also in children's church, they gave me one of these. And I'm going to give it away because we take it in and we give it away. But I am here to love. And my heart's on this side, so I'm going to love. But... I am, I am here. It feels so good. I'm on cloud nine. I'm just so excited. And I had a beautiful basket that was given to me, a big basket, and just I've received so much love and so much support. I've received everything except the pod that is supposed to come hopefully tomorrow morning that has most of my clothes in it. Um, you know, basic things like that <laughs> and an iron. Uh, but I look forward to seeing all of you next week when I get to speak to you on Mother's Day and visit with you today, and also I'll be in the annual meeting. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's an honor, truly, truly an honor to be here with you, and I feel so blessed right now. I can't, I'm ready to cross that bridge with all of you. Amen. Thank you. <laughs>